the name of God. Is it important to have his name on our lips in worship and in praise and in holiness? Or is it supposed to be banned according to tradition of the rabbis? I'm going to make this brief video to show, based on Tanakh, that the name of God is absolutely critical in worship. Now, in Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 through 16, when Moshe is speaking to God, Elohim, he says to him, If I go to the children of Israel, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God says these words, Ehiyeh, asher ehiyeh, which means, I will be what I will be. Now, most people will stop there. But if you read the next verse, God actually gives his name, Yehoah, which has the root words of he was, he is, and he will be, which connects with the statement that was said in the previous verse. It's a connection, just like all Hebrew words have this connection, like fabric. His name means eternal, timeless, infinite, beyond what anybody can imagine. We cannot imagine someone who had no beginning and has no ending. We cannot humanly fathom this point of view. This name, based on what we're going to read from Scripture, is so critical. The name appears 6,828 times exactly in Tanakh. More times than any other title or attribute given to him. More times than all of those titles and attributes put together. The name is of the utmost importance. It is very important. It is crucial in our worship and in our praise to him. And when we speak to others about who is God and who is not. There is one name. Only one. He does not share his glory with no one. God is not a trinity. He is one and no other. Just like the Shema says. Shema Israel, Yehovah Eloheinu, Yehovah Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yehovah is our God, Yehovah is one. He is not a trinity. So therefore, that's why his name is so important, because it means the eternal. No beginning, and no end, which means he cannot die. If he can die, then he's not eternal. Regardless of what argument you present, it's not true. God is not a man. If you believe God came in human form, I suggest you read Deuteronomy chapter 4, which states, So watch yourselves, beware for your souls, that you did not see anything when Elohim spoke to you from the fire. You only heard a voice, lest you corrupt yourselves by making an image of a man or a woman or an animal or a fish. It's a warning that God has no image. If you have an image for God, he is not God. Period. That's it. It's that simple. God is not a form of a man, woman, or anything on this very earth or in the heavens above. So with that said, let's start. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. God introduces himself to the entire nation of Israel. He says, Anochi Yehovah, I am Yehovah your God, who brought you to the land of Egypt. He gives his name to the entire nation of Israel. I am Yehovah your God. He doesn't say, I am Hashem. He doesn't say, I am Adonai. He gives his name so that they will know that that name represents the totality of of the one true God alone. It's very clear. Let's keep going. For those of you who say that God has many names, I just have to tell you that that is utter falsehood and blasphemy. That is not true. He has many titles, amazing, wonderful titles and attributes, but he has only one personal name. That is the name of Yehovah. Let's not get that confused. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 27, the priestly blessings. At the end of the blessing, he says, 
and you will place my name on the children of Israel, and I will come to them and bless them. So the placing of his name is of the utmost importance. The name. Let's keep going. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 2 says, And when David made his peace offering, the burnt offering and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of God. Not in the title, not in the attributes, in the name. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. You shall fear Yehovah your God, and you shall swear by his name. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 5. For Yehovah your God has chosen him, Israel, out of all the tribes to stand, to what? To minister in the name of Yehovah, him and his sons forever. Not until tradition hits, not until the rabbis ban the name, for all time, forever, le'olam. So, if you're going to follow tradition, then you're not following the words of God. It doesn't matter what your excuse is. You're not following the words of God. Joshua chapter 9, verses 8 through 9. And they, meaning the Hivites, said unto Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are you? And where have you come from? And they said to him, From a very far country, your servants are coming because, because of what? Because of the name of Yehovah, your God. It is the name that they heard of and what he has done that brought them to Joshua. It's very clear. Jeremiah chapter 12, verses 16. And if they, meaning the nations, the non-Jews, because a lot of Jewish people make the claim that if you're not Jewish, you're like second-class citizens. This is not scripture. This is not Tanakh. Let's read what it says. If they learn the ways of my people, Israel, and swear by my name, it's not enough. If that's not enough for you, he then says how to swear. Now listen carefully. Saying, as Yehovah lives. That's how you swear. He tells you right there. This is not the only place where that appears, by the way. Even as they once taught my people to swear by Baal. Now it's interesting, Baal actually means master, or similar to master, or coincidentally, the Lord. And that's exactly what they're calling on. The Lord, Adonai, or Hashem, which is another title. Isaiah 42, verse 8. He says, I am Yehovah. For those of you who think he has many names, he says, I am Yehovah, that is my name. It does not say that is one of my names. It does not say that is my title. And he certainly does not say, I am Hashem, that is my name, or the Lord. He says, I am Yehovah. This is in writing, in every Tanakh, in the Hebrew, every place where it says the Lord, or Adonai, that they claim says Adonai, it says his name. If it was not supposed to be spoken, and the prophets knew this, and the people of Israel knew this, it would not appear to be read by the people or uttered. This is blasphemy. This is replacing God's holy name with a title. This is a sin, a grave sin against Elohim personally. Isaiah 56 verse 6, and the, four, the strangers, excuse me, the strangers who join themselves to Yehovah to minister to him and what? To love the name of Elohim, of Yehovah. So even the strangers who love the name of God, the non-Jewish people that grab hold of his covenant and love the name of God, he says even in the time of the end that he will welcome them in the house of prayer, his temple. It's very clear that if you love the name of God, you will be welcome. Daniel chapter 2, verse 20. Blessed be the name of God, for wisdom and mightiness are his alone. Blessed be what? The name of God. Not the title, not the attribute, the name of God. Daniel chapter 9, verse 4. I prayed to Yehovah my God and made confession, saying, I quote, Yehovah, the great and awesome God. Daniel does not declare Hashem. The Lord, awesome God. No, he says the name of God because it's of the utmost importance to identify God Almighty. 
If you read Tanakh very clearly, there were people in Tanakh, bad people, that swore on the name of their God, but they said the Most High. For example, Abraham got confronted by one of the kings, and he said, to the Most High. And Abraham says, no, to Yehovah, Most High, creator of heaven and earth. He identifies by name that this is the Most High, Yehovah, the Eternal One. Let's keep going. Joel chapter 2, verse 32, And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of Yehovah shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as Yehovah said, and among the survivors. The people that call upon the name, this is the problem in Israel at the temple. Nobody's calling on the name of God. No one. Even many Karaites are not doing this. They are following the tradition of the rabbis. This is not scripture. This is not Tanakh. These are not the words of the holy words of God at all. We are following traditions and falsehood. If you read the Torah or the Tanakh as a whole and you see his name there and you pronounce as Adonai or the Lord, sorry to tell you that is a sin that is removing the words the holy words of Tanakh. That is sinful. Hosea chapter 12 verse 5. Yehovah, God of hosts, Yehovah is his memorial name. That's his name. To be remembered forevermore. Psalms 18 verse 49. Therefore I will give thanks to you, O Yehovah, among the nations and sing praises to your name. Not your title, not your attribute, but your name. Psalms 20, verse 1, and then verse 7. Yehovah, hear you in the day of trouble. Right now, they're in trouble. Hear you in the name of, in, in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. The name. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of Yehovah our God. Sad that this is not the case today. Psalms 22, verse 22. I will declare your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. Psalms 45, verse 17. I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise you forever and ever. This is what David wanted. Sadly, this is not continued to this day. Psalm 79, verse 6. Pour out your wrath upon the heathen that have not known your name. And upon the kingdoms that have not called upon your name. That's exactly what's happening to the sin of Israel. Psalms 105. Read the whole chapter. But verse 1 and 3 says, Give thanks to Yehovah. Call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the people. Glory is in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek him rejoice. Psalms 113, verses 1 through 3. Praise Yah. Praise you, servants of Yehovah. Praise the name of Yehovah. Blessed be the name of Yehovah from this time until forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, Yehovah's name is to be praised. Checkmate. If that's not clear to you, I don't know what can make it clear to you. Let's keep going. I'm not done yet. Psalms 124, verse 8. Our help is in the name of Yehovah, who made the heaven and earth. Psalms 129, verse 8. The blessing of Yehovah be upon you. We bless you in the name of Yehovah. That's how they bless people. In the name of Yehovah. Isaiah 63, verse 16 says, O Yehovah, you are our Father, our Redeemer. Your name is from everlasting, not temporary, not to be removed by the rabbis. And to the rabbis who think that I'm committing blasphemy, Isaiah 66, verse 5, Hear the word of Yehovah, you that tremble at his word, your brothers that hated you for my name's sake shall be ashamed. Psalms 34, verse 3, Oh, magnify Yehovah with me, you people, and let us exalt his name together. Finally, Psalms 83, verse 18, there's many more verses, but I don't have the time, that they may know that you, whose name is Yehovah, you alone are the most high over all the earth. Are you going to follow tradition or the words of God? Shalom.